because you know your motives. You know a lot of thoughts. You know a lot of things going on that maybe somebody else doesn't see on the outside, but God sees. And those are the things when you check and examine. And if you are honest with God and say, search my heart, examine me, I can guarantee you, you might see some things. And that's opportunity to repent and get it right. This self-examination is not to stay away from communion, but that we may eat, examine, repent, rejoice for the provision that he provided that you can have your sins removed. Okay? Look back to Calvary and be thankful. Look in your heart if anything's wrong and get it on the blood of Jesus. Look ahead for his soon return because you're ready. You're clean. And I think God put this in the church also because he probably could... Of course, he knows everything, but we get busy sometimes. And sometimes we can just maybe go a week or two weeks or three weeks, and something's wrong in our life, but we're just too busy to really stop and give it some big consideration. But this is a time, stop, the Bible says, stop, examine yourself. Because if we do, we're probably going to find something's not right. And God doesn't want to... Have you continue in that condition? He wants you to repent and get it right. 13, rapture of the church. Okay. I will show you a mystery. Not every one of us will die. We will all be changed. The Bible talks about the dead will rise first. Those that are alive and remain when the Lord Jesus returns will be changed and meet them in the air. They will not die. They will not decay. Now, if Jesus would return next week and we still have breath in this body, we will not die. We will meet them in the air. This is called the rapture. Now, the, ra the word rapture is not a biblical word. I'll touch on that in a moment. But the meaning of the word describes the event is why it's coined rapture. It's a catching away of the bride of Christ. So if somebody, you're talking to somebody and maybe we say Trinity is not in the Bible and then maybe they can say, well, rapture is not in the Bible either. Well, they're right. So just so you know that, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Okay? Catching away of the bride of Christ, snatching away quickly. And rapture defines that event as the Bible describes it. Okay? I will come back again and I will take you to be with me. Revelations talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb. The bride has made herself ready. The church is the bride. Okay? This is where I put rapture is not a biblical word. But rapture means to siege, to catch, to catch away, to catch up, to pluck, to pull, or take it by force. Siege means, and it's very quickly. And that's why we say rapture, to coin that experience. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15, 18, the Lord Jesus told us that when he comes, we won't go up to meet him ahead of his followers who have died. Okay, this is describing it. The dead in Christ, not everybody. The dead in Christ, this is Christians, will rise first. People who were not born again Christians will remain in the grave until the second resurrection. That's why this is the church, the bride. Those that have died in Christ Jesus will be raised first. Those that are also in Christ Jesus that are alive at that event will meet them in the air and be with the Lord and forever be with the Lord. This is why when there is a death of a believer, at the end in that verse, verse, eight, verse 18, it says, encourage one another with these words. I didn't put it here, but in verse 13 where it starts, it says, don't have sorrow like people who don't know the Lord. Don't have sorrow like the pagans have. Why? Because this is our hope. That loved one that just left. Comfort yourself with these words. You're going to see him again. And this also is, when people die, they are in the grave. The dead do not praise the Lord. There is no knowledge in the grave. It's not, I die and now I'm in heaven. I die and the next one's in heaven. We always say that at funerals. Not we do, but a lot of people at funerals say that. <laughs> they're, that they're already in heaven. They're asleep until the first resurrection. Christ was the first fruits of the resurrection. Those that are his at his coming. 
the trump of God will blow. Translated, changed in a twinkling of an eye, these mortal bodies will put on immortality and we will meet the Lord in the air at the first resurrection. That is the bride of Christ. That is the redeemed. First Thessalonians talks about actually the rapture of the church is to escape the wrath of God to come because not only is there a rapture, there is a judgment. And our way of escape is the rapture because the judgment is not meant for the bride. Whether we are awake or asleep at the time of this event, we will rise. We will be together with him. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, the rapture. The second death has no power over you. If you made the first resurrection, you made it. <laughs> Forever will you be with the Lord. What is the second death? The second death is hell. Hell and damnation. The lake of fire. So if you made the first resurrection, the second death has no power over you. If you are born once, you will die twice. You will die physically, and you will die the second death. This is eternal, eternally separated from God and punished for your sins. If you are born twice, you will die once. You're born physically, but you are born again. And because you are born again, we will die physically if the Lord didn't come back yet, but we will raise to eternal life. The second death has no power over you. We're saved. First resurrection, the rapture. Okay. Actually, there's a judgment later. I don't know how everybody's in heaven. And then there's going to be a judgment to determine where you're going. <laughs> what, you got to recall them out of heaven <laughs> and say, oops, you're in the wrong place? There's going to be a judgment to determine that. <laughs> so it's not everybody's up there and everything's well and good. <laughs> you, you're waiting. You're sleeping. Actually, when you go to bed at night and you wake up in the morning, that time just went by. You don't know. That's how the dead is going to be. You're just gone. Your next conscious moment, it's, you don't know all those hundreds of years went by. Your next moment, you're with your loved ones. They're in the presence of the Lord. The rapture. If you're a born-again Christian, it's beautiful. Okay? So Philippians, it talks about our poor bodies are going to be changed and made into his glorious body. We will see him as he is and we will be changed as he is. We will know him like he really is. Spiritual body, no flesh and blood. Flesh and blood cannot enter heaven. Second coming of Jesus, Acts 1.11 when Jesus ascended into heaven, they said the same way you saw him go is the same way he is coming back. And in fact, the return of the Lord is to Israel at that place. Titus 2.13, we're waiting for the glorious return of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Revelations 22, come quickly. I come quickly. My reward is with me. The return of Jesus Christ. In Thessalonians, it talks about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Timothy, until our Lord Jesus Christ returns. In 2 Thessalonians, now this one, actually, if you read the whole thing, it, it kind of is uh, something you don't like to believe. What about all those good people? That's why you've got a responsibility. The Lord Jesus is re revealed coming from heaven with his mighty angels and blazing fire. Why? There's going to be judgment, taking vengeance, and punishment on those who do not know God or have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Revelation talks about this too. Now, I know we don't like to think about that. We're saved from the wrath of God. There is a wrath of God to come. The Son of Man will appear in the sky. The Son of Man coming on the clouds in the sky with power and great glory. Actually, this is the statement he made just before they crucified him. Actually, it was revealing who he is, and that's why they crucified him. When the Son of Man comes in his glory. Revelation, when he comes, the Lord says, 
I am Alpha Omega, beginning and the end, the one who is, was, and is to come, I am, 